Proverbs thirteen nineteen. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. Do you realize man could be perpetually happy, but most men despise the way to happiness and success. The greatest source of human fulfillment and joy is found in righteousness, in truth, and in wisdom. When a man obtains these things, it is the sweetest accomplishment on earth. But most men despise these things so much and love their sin instead that they refuse to even pursue the reward. They hate and loathe the thought of giving up their sinful lifestyle. The word but in this passage is what is called a disjunctive conjunction joining two clauses set in opposition to each other. The desire accomplished must be the holy desire of the righteous by virtue of it being sweet to the soul and set in opposition to the evil of fools in the parallel clause. Proverbs 10:24, The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Proverbs 11.23, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. The desire of a righteous man is to increase in righteousness, truth, and wisdom. In Proverbs 18.1 says, through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. There's an enormous satisfaction and pleasure when righteousness is the goal for life. Solomon said in Proverbs 3.13, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. You see, walking with God far exceeds the superficial happiness of the fool. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. The sweetest accomplishment are the joys of heaven. Listen to the psalmist, 17, 14 to 15. From, wit, from men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasures, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. As for me... I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Fools hate the idea of leaving their sins and do not see the reward that they are missing. Ephesians 4.17-19 through 19 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness. This is very simply. If you desire godliness, God has done a great work to cause you to love what you once hated, and to hate what you once loved. There are people, they want to get saved, but they don't want to leave their sin because they love it. And yet if they would turn to Christ, that love for their sin will begin to dissipate. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with tear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 